Hari Om to all the Divine Atma Jyotis. We've been contemplating on Aparoksha Anubhuti based on uh, Shri Prabhuji's uh, talks on Aparoksha Anubhuti. So currently we are uh, contemplating on day two related uh, talks. So we have converted uh, all these uh, talks into various uh, questions from each of the day. So let us continue our contemplation of day two based questions. So, so far we have covered the first four questions um, that, that we are seeing here. That is, um, what is the limitation that is being negated when we say I'm not the body, not the mind, not the intellect, and how does this help? We've also uh, at length uh, looked into various words that are a pointer to Brahman, such as Niramaya, Nirabha, so, so on and so forth. Then we have also looked into the illusion of the separation. How one gets into an illusion, there is a separation, me and the other. And whether that separation is uh, there in reality. Then we have also, in the last session, examined the, so how I am the light of the light. So these many questions is what we have uh, contemplated so far. Today, the question would be to distinguish between material and intelligent cause. So, what is the difference between material and intelligent cause? And what is the value of understanding this distinction? That's what we will contemplate on today. Who would like to uh, begin with? So just to uh, help us come into the context, all of you uh, would know this uh, classical example of a uh, potter making the pots. So using that example, so when you when you think of a pot as a um, outcome, then you know you can uh, infer that someone must have done the pot, and you also infer that something is needed to make the part. Now, the something that is uh, making the part or that is being used to make the part is mud. That something is what is referred as material. To make the part, you need material. And then the mud doesn't automatically come into the part form. Someone has to prepare it, someone has to turn it on the wheel, so on and so forth. So someone has to know this entire process of making the pot. And that is the potter, what is referred as the intelligent cause. So the jnana about the pot making comes from the potter and the vastu or the material for making the pot is nothing but the mud. So the vastu and the jnana are the two things that are necessary to make the pot. So this is the uh, simplest idea taken in uh, Vedanta for understanding the Vastu and the Jnana. So what is the use of this and uh, how do we use this in the context of uh, the world and uh, me. Yes, Padmaji. Sir, can we also say that uh, also referring to the creation and the creator? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, my understanding is uh, like you gave the example of the uh, making of the pot in that there is a potter who is making the pot or who has the knowledge of how to make the pot and then the clay is needed there to make the pot. So 
if i take this example itself here the clay is the uh, material cause and the potter the with the knowledge is the intelligent uh, cause but if i take it as a creation and a creator or even in this example the the creator itself is manifesting as the creation itself so uh, technically they both are same they are not different from each other however uh, like brahman is the uh, brahm if we take brahman as the intelligent cause then brahman is only manifesting as the material cause uh, cause also so i uh, they both are same they are not separate from one another is uh, my understanding what is the use of understanding this is if <clears throat> i am brahman then whatever i am seeing in my life or whatever is uh, going on in my life i am the creator of that that is one understanding i get from that what is the use of this and when i get to know that i am the cause of it or i am the creator of it then i can create it any way i want is the uh, clarity that i get from this all right so let's uh, probe a little further into manifesting or manifestation so you mentioned that brahman is the intelligent cause mm. and is also the material yeah so, because if i if i take the example of clay yes then uh, it, it is it is just it, again it, it's a form of existence only there is nothing uh, whether whatever shape and form it is taking the the the, the basic Uh, element there or the basic material is clay only it can take any form and shape like that brahman is the one uh, is like the clay so it can take any shape and form so it is up to up to uh, brahman what he wants to create right <clears throat> right so now uh, let's let's uh, examine two aspects here little more hmm. what kind of a day to day experience you can use to say mm. that uh, in the case of the see in the case of the pot you can clearly see the pot the clay or the mud that is used to make the pot mm. and the potter and the process of making the pot you can very clearly see okay so mm. and you know they are distinct the the you can very clearly say that uh, pot is not the potter mud is not the uh, potter the wheel and the process is not the potter the uh, potter has the knowledge of the process and through that an external effect happens outside of the potter right so mm -hmm. what are the yeah. effect that happens is outside of the potter once yeah. the effect has happened you can say okay look here this is potter and the creation that he has created the pot is separate from him and you mm. can take the pot away from the potter mm. you can separate them mm. right mm. okay so now here in the case of the uh, creation mm. or what we call as a world mm. is that so yes sir it is <clears throat> so then uh, is the creation separate from the creator and where is the creator and where is the creation then yeah so in your earlier example of the potter and all that and your how you are explaining that it is different yes you can see that it is all different however if we go to the base of that existence or awareness is only there no even if in the case of a mud or in the case of the potter existence is there which is uh, which is essentially there so if i take that same example to creation what i uh, say is 
say for example in my body if i have to take my personal example <clears throat> there is uh, say i am experiencing some kind of uh, pain so where is this pain coming from it is because of my uh, senses and the mind interpreting it that i am i am experiencing i, I am mentioning or i am saying that i am having pain or whatever that is because of the mind and all the collective uh, perspective that i am getting of whatever i am feeling right now however nothing is happening actually to me right this is being experienced by the body uh, mind and intellect complex so i am brahman but the 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 form or the body that is currently i am experiencing through is this female body or is of this particular height weight this is the way i am in the form but essentially what i am this inside it is separate no from whatever i am experiencing or what i am whatever i am going through in the physical body or even in the subtle body like the mind whatever is happening in my mind is also separate from me right the real me the real self so when when you you use a sentence or a phrase such as separate see the notion of separation means what in 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 yeah the... sir so i i am not saying it like uh separate not not in that sense i am saying that the 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 identification uh, that um, i am this body that has to be removed that is what i mean by separation otherwise uh, actually if if i if i truly uh, if i truly know that uh, i am not this body mind complex then there is no need for uh, even uh, contemplating on the separation or whatever no i am just going to be a witness to whatever is happening even to this body mind and complex to that also i am going to be only a witness because there is nothing to do but because of my association with the body only i am having this suffering so when i disassociate or when i put that i am separate from this uh, body or i am not what is happening to this body then i don't have to suffer anymore because then anything can be happening it is outside of me it is uh, it is not um, uh, how do i put it sir uh, the the but the separate word i am not using it like that i am not using it as a two separate identity which is going parallelly i am not saying like that okay so um like in the case of the pot and the potter mm. see what separates them you know in in space you mm. can see that there's a potter standing and there's a pot standing correct when but even see, that is in your mind only no that is correct that is correct but yeah. let's use that example to reflect on the creator and the creation okay in the, in the yeah. example of the potter and the pot yeah. you see two objects yeah. pot there's a potter and what separates them how do you say that there's a pot and a potter you because say, of the form and the name form and the name and there is a, a, a difference at the space between them right so mm. there is one one form appearing here which you call as a potter and mm. another form appearing here uh, you know i'm just using my right hand and left hand to represent mm. that mm. so the right hand is representing the pot so now this is potter and this is pot and mm. how do you say that this is pot and th uh, this is potter and this is pot because you know there is a distance mm. and uh, there is a distinct form there is a distinct form right mm. Mm. so the forms are uh, you know you see the boundary and you see the space mm. that mm. is how you are recognizing oh there is a potter there is a pot mm. now in the case of creation and creator then uh, where is the distance when when we when you say mm -hmm. the creator and the mm -hmm. creation are separate using the analogy you gave mm -hmm. i and uh, what i am witnessing is separate mm -hmm. where is the separation 
Okay, because uh, sir, in this example, the same example that you gave, I am I am not the potter. I am not the pot. I am the space. I am the space. That is how I mentioned the material and the intelligent cause as the creator and the creation. Now, if there is no space at all, uh, I mean, that is like the screen, no, sir. That, that is the screen on which this thing is being played out. Hmm. If there is no screen, where will it even play? There is no drama at all, no. Hmm. So, uh, when I say that, when I asked you that, can we say that the material and the intelligent cause as the creator and the creation, I meant it like that. I am not saying I am the creator or I am the creation, but I am that space where everything is being played out. So, if I am the space, how does it matter if there is a potter or a sculptor or a pot and a uh, and an idol, you know, it is all the same to me. I am just witnessing everything. So if I understand that I am the space, then I don't have to worry about what is being played there. There is no uh, suffering or bondage or anything or even liberating from that, right? It is just there. It is just being played. I just watch it. I just simply watch it. That is how uh, I described it, sir. I am not I'm so not how, saying how, that. How is this uh, playing out? How those uh, characters are appearing? What is making those characters appear? From where are they getting? <coughs> when you see it uh, through your senses, you know. They, yeah, it is. Uh, it is coming from. Uh, it is coming from my uh, vasanas and impressions, isn't it? So the vasanas and impressions are. Uh, uh, ca causing some desires within me and the desires are leading to the thoughts and then the thoughts will uh, translate into some action and uh, that will again lead into some result whatever whether it is desirable to me or not desirable to me however the, 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 the reason for the action will be something that I desire maybe happiness or wealth or something will, will provoke that action however uh, it is coming from my previous impressions and vasanas that I carry. Okay. So, the creation itself is manifesting according to you because of the vasanas, the impressions. Yeah, because uh, what I feel is, again, uh, the impression or the vasanas is also the, the reason why uh, the three gunas are fluctuating or in, are in the order that they are within you, isn't it? Like uh, there is a, there is an imbalance in the in the gunas right within us in whatever proportions that is there. Based on that, we have certain desires coming within us. Okay, that and and that when to a certain when, extent uh, you can explain your life situations based on such a reasoning. But how do you explain this uh, uh, outside of that, you know, this entire big uh, universe? In a big there is nothing outside of me, you know, sir. Everything is being played out in my mind only. If I am not there, what is there? There is nothing. Whether it's my husband, whether it's my son, my dog, whatever, it is all in my mind. The moment I am not there, the light is not there, then there is nothing there to see. Sure, so that's correct. Every that, that, huh. that, that is clear. Huh. But, the, but the question uh, is focused slightly on a, a different direction. Now the question is your life situation. Say for example, uh, what did I eat for breakfast today? Upma. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I decided to uh, eat upma. Why do you? Mm -hmm. uh, why did you decide to eat upma? I like upma. So. In that sense, you know, your life situation, whatever you call as my life situations, mm. you're able to give a uh, this kind of a cause and effect, cause and effect that is nothing but the karma, right? Mm. Now, how do you uh, explain the cause and effect relationship between uh, to, to this entire um, manifest universe, which consists of the trees, mountains, river, Ocean, stars, galaxies. Now, what is the cause and effect there? Now, your life situation, 
you are saying, you know, your impressions. Now, are you the one who's then uh, uh, creating this mountain? Are you the one because of whose uh, uh, thinking process are the cause and effect uh, uh, are the impressions? This other universe is also getting projected. How do you how do you prove so? If it is so, no, I am not. I am not the one who is. Uh, I am only seeing it again. I don't know actually how the mountain looks, right? I really don't know. I am just maybe uh, again. I have seen a picture of it when I was very young, and somebody who is elder to me pointed out that this is a mountain. So I think this is a mountain. Yeah. Say if I was blind, I wouldn't know what is a mountain. I would only know the word mountain. Maybe because I am still able to hear, and somebody said this is mountain. They would have said some color, but I I cannot then picture how a mountain looks. Because I have an eye and they have showed me a picture of a mountain, probably when I see it, my mind is connecting that picture and the actual object, uh, whatever it is seeing. But there is, there is only existence there, right? I don't know how actually a mountain looks. I don't know how a flower looks. It is just a, it is just a mixing of some colors and some shapes that I am seeing and I am and probably previously many people have labeled it as this kind of flower. It's a rose or it's a lily or something like that. So I am identifying it as that. But actually, do I really know that this is how a rose is? Really, how do I say that that is a rose? The only thing I can say that it is there. It is existent. Because of my light, I can see that light. Fair enough. Can... It's also correct. Uh, there is no... There is no um, a second thought about what you just now said. It is uh. because of you that you know you are able to see. Uh. So the question is, what is making this appear, this so-called world appear? And when you say that you know the material and the intelligent cause both are nothing but Brahman, mm. then both must be you only, because at the end of the day. Who are you? Brahman. I am Brahman. And oh. when you when you also say, see the material and the intelligence cause is nothing but Brahman, mm. essentially saying you. Yeah. Then how is it separate from you? How is it different from you? I am not saying it is separate, but it is. Uh, separate not in that sense sir again I want to say that not, se not separate like that but for explanation purpose I was using that word separate otherwise there is nothing outside of me that's what I said everything that is going on uh, outside is also going on within me no? for example if, if I am very uh, restless today say I am very restless uh, my experiences will also reflect that outside of me. I might meet, uh, I, I might uh, meet, I might go somewhere, I might experience all such things only which is making me further and further restless. Uh, it, the, I mean, that is how at least I have, I have, it's my personal experience like that. If I am calm within the, the day or the experiences that come to me also reflect that. Uh, it's it's very smooth. Whatever I experience is smooth because my inner inner uh, inside I am very calm like that. So my experiences reflect that. So from that perspective, whatever I uh, experience within is what I experience outside as well in my world. Is how I see. So that in that sense, I am only the creator of that, isn't it? Mm. However, I am the creator of that. And then um, the 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 pot, in this case, then the potter also I am only, and the experiences that are coming to me are going to be that pot. No, hmm. maybe it is not essentially like a very distinct, uh, like you described that the pot is separate. You can see, but anyway, it is my creation only that is coming to me like a pot. Maybe it's not a pot. It's a. It's an emotion. It's a. It's a, it's a sensation that is coming to me. What I give is what I am getting. 
what i am experiencing within is what i am experiencing outside also in that in that sense it is it is the same hmm. that is so, how i so i our, i didn't our uh, explanation uh, so far focused on you know how you are experiencing the world which is correct hmm. how do you explain using your day to day experience or what uh, aspect in vedanta that you can use to explain this entire big world is nothing but you how do you how do you kind of uh, explain that it seems to be like you know some other person is coming some other, right now there is a dialogue happening that is between you and me right so everything seems to be like uh, separate right so there is a big world out there so um, i didn't end up uh, uh, you know creating that star how did that star come then how did the mountain come then so how would how would you explain that phenomena what is your day to day experience that can help you to explain that also then who is making all that i i don't know how to explain it sir maybe you can shed some light because uh, uh is is a question, question no question yeah yeah it, it's making sense to me huh. actually i feel like long time back i only asked you this question also yeah. but uh, now that question doesn't arise in me anymore yeah. i don't know if the if i got the answer and that's why it doesn't arise or maybe i don't know really but Uh, i am not able to put it into words but uh, 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 but those those things don't uh, bother me anymore is what i feel how does it matter mm. uh, uh, ha, ha, yeah how does it matter uh, whether there is a mountain or whether there is all those things i remember uh, uh, during corona also i was troubled like this especially um i think that was the time we were taking up tatva bodha and uh, i wondered like am i am i creating all this corona also that's how i wondered and then if it is so then why am i creating uh, such horrible things was used to be my thought uh, should i not create if i am the creator then should i not create only wonderful experiences why will i um, create such destruction and all this and uh, during that discussion i remember something uh, came up about uh, uh, there is a um, i i don't even remember the exact word now but there was something about a universal consciousness and a, and a individual consciousness uh, but i can't put my i mean i can't explain it right now uh, in context to this all right okay so yeah. let's 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 keep that question um, yeah we'll, we'll uh, visit that but but uh, but w- was my uh, the 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 way i understand it is it is it is it to the point sir is it like in the correct direction like yeah so as far as uh, when when you say <laughs> i am the creator of all the experiences that i am going through mm. absolutely right right so mm. um now it still leaves a gap for okay fair enough somebody came and scolded you you felt bad or you know somebody came and scolded you but still you could take it uh, peacefully you are mm. thing so mm. it's very easy to relate to that mm. how do you explain the star the galaxy the mountain now um, are you the one who is then creating the stars and the galaxy and the mountain also uh because it, it is it is touchable smellable feelable you know it seems to be you know, such a huge thing you know how do you explain that using your day to day experience is it even possible so is is it possible to explain the uh, the universe or the creation uh, with your day to day experience what you explained so far is how i am creating my my own inner psychological experience which is perfect mm. but okay. this 
this material universe that seems to be out there, including mm -hmm. this body, how is this getting created then? Becomes a puzzling question, isn't it? Now, is there a way to explain this through Vedanta, through your uh, simple day-to-day -day experience? That's the that's the focus of the question. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So let's let's uh, come back. Let's. Uh, yeah, I'll tell. Think about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's turn it some more. Yeah. Who would like to uh, go next? Haryam Rupaji, um, you, you joined a little late, I think. Yes, sir. Haryam, sir. Yeah, Haryam. Uh, can I take the figure? Yes, yes, sir, Junji. See, uh, between the material and intelligence cause, there's something between gross and the subtle, you know. So, these are all the culmination of the talks what I heard from Prabhuji. That's where I'm my, my thoughts are coming from. Now, it was very clear that it's like the fan and the electricity. You know? So, now, the, the energy, the, the energy cannot create the wind, but, and the wind is not created without the energy. So this is a thing and coming to the difference between intelligent cause and the metal cause, intelligent cause is nothing but the electricity which is provided to the fan and the material is the fan by itself. Now that is the thing. Now how did the fan come in the first place or who created the fan is the next question. Now everything is a creation of the cosmos itself which has come into reality. Uh, from two different forms. One is the consciousness and one is the energy form. Now, when energy becomes gross and gross, it becomes the matter of the material. So, it is the source of one single thing which has come into existence over a period of time. And, uh, and the whole existence has come into picture because the consciousness has become grosser and grosser. And the more grosser it becomes, it creates, uh, first consciousness converts to energy and energy converts to the matter. So this is my understanding, sir. Okay, so let's uh, take that uh, viewpoint itself. Consciousness becomes um, grosser and grosser in the form of energy, and that is the material, right? Am I am I phrasing it correctly based on what uh, I heard? Correct. Consciousness becomes the energy, and then later on, that's a grosser form of energy, uh, sorry, consciousness, and then much more grosser is a form called matter. Matter, right? Okay. Now, when we use the uh, uh, word becomes, so it is like it has, uh, it has changed. So, what you call as, uh, uh, say, for example, uh, mud, uh, and you, you mix it with water, now it has become uh, like a dough. And now that you can uh, uh, rotate and uh, you can, uh, you know, using your hand, you can give it a shape. So it takes the form of a pot. So that is the kind of the image that comes when we say becomes, right? So it was mud, a lump of clay that you took, you mixed it with water. So there's one more thing called water that had to be added and then they had to be nicely mixed like a dough and then they had to be rotated and shaped. Now it has become a pot. Mm -hmm. So no more that uh, lump of clay can be seen. It's gone now. Mm -hmm. It has become the pot now. Mm -hmm. Right? So, is it a similar analogy here then? When, when you say consciousness becomes the material, is this how you are explaining it? See, this is when the time and space is taken into account. Okay. 
when we go beyond time and space, when time and space itself is not in non, uh, is not an existential factor. You know? So that time it is no becoming, it's just a be. You know? it, hap it just happens. See, the, the way I understood this whole thing is um, long time back I did a program of Vedatri Marishi and mm. uh, the Brahma Gnanam and all those stuff when I did. What I understood from Vedatri Marishi's this thing was uh, there's something called bio Biomagnetic bio field. Yeah. You know, in the biomagnetic field, what happens is uh, this whole creation is about evolution and it's not about entropy. It doesn't stagnate or it doesn't stay remain in the status quo. It goes on evolving, 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 evolving. And that evolution is the this is a form of evolution from one form to another. So in that sense, it's a becoming. There's no be there. And all. So that means to say that, let us say first that one atom started, that Paramanu, that one atom started and it started with such speed that it has to get into, it, it, got, it, it emerged as one more atom and one more atom. And that is how the whole becoming became. I am talking about even we do not know. We say call it anadi. Even there is there is no concept like beginning or begin beginning or end. Now, so that is immeasurable. And that being the case, in the whole process, if you ask, yes, it is becoming. Then what happened to the being? As the being. The become the big uh, uh, through the process of becoming as a being become the um, matter yeah being itself is become the matter now then what happened to being then being must have gone away lump of clay must have gone away no it's not like gone away be the being itself is uh, see that's what i understand is being is the noun form and the verb form is a becoming part of it that means this is action Hmm. That action has be, become the becoming part of it. Yeah, sure. However, once when something becomes something, right? What it was before, so it was A before, and now it has become B, right? Hmm. So the lump of clay has become the pot. Yeah. Which means that the lump of clay is no more there. The form has changed. The form has changed. Yeah. Okay. So, but you cannot say that, you know, the lump of clay, the original material is anymore there. It's still there. Because that, that, that still exists. The space exists, the matter exists, the earth, the fire, everything, all the Panchipotas exist. We cannot say it's not there. Panchipotas definitely is there, na? How can we say that Panchipotas is that, that clay itself has taken the form of the uh, pot? The gold, the, gold, the gold ornament has come from the from gold. But when you melt the gold ornament, again it comes, gold only comes. So, so what was there? Then in, the, in the, case of the, the case of the world, in the case of the creation, mm. then uh, the creator has become the creation. Mm. Then what happened to the creator? The creator is a part of the creation. Nah? He, he is very much in the, is, is the essential being of the creation. Then he is also transforming with the creation. He... So is, it, is it because of Maya? Okay. Uh, go a little deeper uh, into that thought process, Padmaji. Yeah, so uh, so uh... How how it came to me is like when you were asking Arjunji just now. Hmm. So, uh, Brahman is not, Brahman cannot change. Uh, like hmm. just now you said, does it mean Brahman is changing? Brahman is not changing, hmm. but 
he is uh, because of the maya there is an illusion there is an illusion of all this creation the creation itself is an illusion only no mm. so uh, so because of the maya there is there is a, the, the, we experience this entire uh, uh, thing we see all this the mountain everything is there but as such there is nothing uh, as such there is nothing Mm. Uh, there is only existence mm. so because of the play of this maya all these illusions we are experiencing that uh, that is why uh, that that is why like uh, for example if you take that ukraine war and all some only some people are suffering there no i am not there i'm just i'm just seeing it in the news and i'm uh, empathizing with them or i may be um, at the maximum i am saying a prayer but i am not going through those experiences but still i am able to see that there is some unrest somewhere so um, that is all an illusion i feel actually nothing is really happening so, so the this, world in, itself in if, example, if i see if, in this huh? very example that you just now gave mm. i am not going through that experience who is this i am who is not going through that experience yeah 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 i mean that that was not the word to be used but yeah uh, i don't know sir now i feel we should not speak in english only there is <laughs> 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 and and you you catch hold of all the uh, words i don't know how else to say it like padmaji uh, padmaji <laughs> Uh, it's not that we should not be speaking english we should not be speaking at all <laughs> yeah yeah that that was the next thing <laughs> should stop speaking yeah yeah so uh, yeah sir so i i feel like that because of this uh, this maya only we have all this is what i i i said but again i am not able to like explain it how you <laughs> want to So, so again but uh, 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 like uh, what prabhu ji was explaining the, the uh, from yesterday what i heard the talk was there is something called the universal consciousness and in the universal consciousness there is a lot of things which is there is stored as the uh, like like uh, some uh, samskaras or the impressions Hmm. and the impression is the one which gets created in various forms and again there is something called individual consciousness again there is impression my individual content impression comes from my past now what i was in the past get created to the present and what i am in present it gets created to the future so it's all the impression rather than saying it's different it's just the impression of the consciousness which is coming up as various forms and the consciousness is very much present in those things because it is not different from consciousness it is the impression of the consciousness hmm it's just a projection it's a projection it is an impression the projection of the impression is what is projecting into the whole process in the, in the whole process however the consciousness remains in everything great but how do you explain the projection of a star or a mountain or a galaxy or a ocean that that is also a part of the overall uh, universal collective consciousness hmm so is there any your personal your day to day experience through which you can give a simple analogy to this is how even this is happening what is that that is happening within you that you know each one of us can easily relate to see for example when i say there is nothing really called as a feeling of anger proving then you know you can say look what is anger when some event or some situations happening in front of you it is the 
thought patterns through which I look at the situation causes a emotion and is that something that is a is it happening permanently no it is not happening permanently it is something that comes and goes away so using the simple example which you know everyone else can relate to we can come to the clarity that yeah anger is a response and i can now choose to respond differently so therefore anger itself is an illusion is a is a simple creation so i can i can help you to relate to that so i don't uh, any, any any other terms you know it's a it's an experience that you and i can relate to so my question is in a similar way is there anything that you can use from your day to day experience to explain this entire uh, magnificent creation one uh, i'll give two examples sir here yeah Right. Uh, the first one is let's take the anger and the sadness part of it. Okay. Yeah. Second yeah. one will come sadness. Now I told about my experience about few days back where I happened with that court and uh, with with my resident another resident was there in the apartment complex. How it got angered in the whole process because he sent a message which was against uh, what I thought was principally wrong. Again, it's my thought. There's mm. nothing called principally wrong. Mm. It's my opinion, my thought that is against the violation of the principles. Mm. Now that got me anger and angry to the extent that I was so angry even in the session which you are conducting on Friday evening and Sunday morning. Mm. So that means the anger was completely over, like clouded in my mind. Mm. Okay. Then when I went to the satsang of Guru Purnima satsang in ninth, hmm. I started observing and I saw the emotion called Arjun which was going through and the other person. All those people were projection of the light which was coming through and I was witnessing those, those things. Hmm. The moment I witnessed as a projection, hmm. my anger dissipated. Hmm. And immediately... Everything was looking like one drama. Mm. The trauma converted into uh, no trauma when I saw the drama outside of my uh, in, uh, drama in the projection. Mm. The trauma was there when it, I was I was a part of that whole thing. I I I became that. So that's where that I was a small I which I got involved in the whole process. Mm. The moment the projection was projected out of that uh, out into the world out mm. into the space hmm. and I could see that small eye and the other small eyes from the bigger eye, everything became calm. Hmm. So where was that eye? Was within me that small eye? Was it a part of me? Yes. Where is the eye now? It's outside of me. Where is the outside of me? It's just a projection. Was that is that a small eye still a part of my eye? Yes. Because the image still is in my brain. Hmm. If there's no image, there's no projection. Mm. because the image is there projection is there mm. so is that bigger small eye the same from the same source yes it's from the same source you know are they different in any way they are different in one sense that one is nothing but the ahankara and the one is the consciousness mm. and where is that source of both of them say me mm. there's no, nothing like outside of me there mm. Then what happened after one one week? We are, or the committee met. That's the best part. Committee met. Mm. We sat down. Then I went to that meeting, and uh, with a lot of calmness, and with your teachings and Padabhi Prabhu's teaching, I said all oh, calm, 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 calm. I went in. When I went in, something flared up, and I took off. Mm. I took off. Now there's no big guy, no big guy, nothing. Mm. Only I, I, I. Hmm. How dare you are to say this? How dare you can talk like this? Hmm. I lift ke shapa I went, I given cursed the lift also. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I cursed the lift. I said, hey, hmm. I never cursed in my life. I don't remember when I cursed. What is this happening? And with hmm. all this Prabhupada's teaching, Vijayji's teaching, where the teaching has gone now? Hmm. <laughs> teaching went into the air now. 
ఓకే నౌ ద రిగ్రెట్ కేమ్ ఇన్ పిక్చర్ అరే ఐ షుడ్ నాట్ అ కర్స్ట్ మ్యాన్ ఓకే దిస్ గైస్ ఆర్ సమ్ ఈడియట్స్ సో లెట్స్ ఫర్గెట్ ఇట్ మేబి దే ఆర్ నాట్ గాట్ ద సేమ్ టీచింగ్ వాట్ ప్రభు వాట్ ఐ హావ్ గాట్ ఫ్రమ్ ప్రభుజి అండ్ విజయ్ జీ ఐ షుడ్ నాట్ అ కర్స్ట్ అగైన్ ద రిగ్రెట్ కేమ్ ఓకే అగైన్ ద స్మాల్ ఐ స్టార్టెడ్ బాదరింగ్ మీ ఇన్ సైడ్ అగైన్ ఐ ప్రొజెక్టెడ్ దట్ అవుట్ సైడ్ అండ్ ఇట్స్ లెట్ మీ విట్నెస్ దట్ ఓకే ఇట్ ఇస్ హ్యాపీ ఇట్స్ హ్యాపీ I am a Vishwamitra or somebody who can give Shapa and everything will happen. I am not at there. Okay, now let us say, but how do I course correct myself in future? Mm. So, course correct myself in future is, Nanu, Nanu, Nim, you can't believe, sir. I listen to the talk of Prabhuji. Mm. Mm. I have been listening to Nanu, 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 from maybe 15-17 years from the time he's been telling. Mm. It never registered in my mind. Mm. Okay, I was just doing that as a, at a beta level or some level. Hmm. just like one one more mechanical uh, process okay he is telling something let me also repeat it hmm. but still nanu nan embodu nanella i don't i didn't even know that who is this i am not the body are you are everything i am absolutely is the body what you are talking about nanu nan embodu nanella hmm. so but after listening to the talk today anything which happens like uh, ramakrishna parmama sir says no like how do you dilute the dark water which is full of dark ink mm. the only thing is go on putting water again into it pure water into it mm. and dilution will happen mm. i can ex- i am experiencing the dilution within myself with that mm. one uh, uh, like mantra nanu nan embudu nanella mm. the way he explains there mm. the jeevatma and paramatma the mm. jeevatma is the nanu nan embudu nanella ee deha manuputi nanella is the jeevatma telling mm. the jeeva telling Mm. and that and that when it tells the mm. jiva, jiva is telling that mm. and when that gets negated mm. then the atma is the one which resides and mm. you are experiencing like sachidananda paramatma shiva nanu nane mm. i tell you sir anything what happens today i had to just close my eyes for a moment and say nanu nane manamalla everything just settles down in me it's unbelievable what's happening as a experience okay so what i'm experience today is the small i big i everything is within my own this two uh, within this two years and the image that is creating the whole process and everything is a projection which happens and if i see that from a light of the consciousness as a witness everything is just playing and i can easily direct the whole play in a way which is so natural so ease and with beautiful flow mm. from maya i am experiencing leela excellent okay so this is about uh, my anger mm. if time permits i can talk about sadness also which i am experiencing uh, i say experience i'll uh, keep it here yeah no this is excellent um, so what the question i'm raising using this very explanation you gave is this ex- explanation is relatable to any one of our day to day experience here right so the way you explained how you got into anger and how you now are able to overcome the same feeling of anger it is very relatable and disassociating with anger correct right i associate with anger and dissociate with anger perfect the question is in a similar way mm. how do you explain mm. this universe which is full of trees mountains ocean stars galaxies animals is there anything in your day to day experience that can help you to say look this is how this day to day experience is happening and so is the case with this universe like what the prompt padma ji gave maya now we are moving closer to this uh, view point yeah but i am again and again asking the same question which is is there anything in our day to day experience now uh, emotional disturbances are emotional understanding the example you gave is perfect 
Mm. How do I explain the mountain, the river, the star, the galaxy? I don't seem to be thinking of projecting. I yeah, definitely I I interpreted uh, some word in a manner that uh, affected me. So that is why uh, I caused that emotion. Clear. But this mountain, this galaxy, how is that? See, See, I, I, I'm sorry, sorry, please go. See, there's a beautiful song. I just sing the first few statements as she is one stanza. Yeah. You know, in, it's in Hindi. So hopefully everybody understands Hindi. If not, it'll we'll translate it. I'll translate it. Is it okay, Panbanji? Uh, yes, yeah. Oh, Taal Mile Nadi Ki Jal Me Nadi Mile Sagar Me Sagar Mile Kaun Si Jal Me Koi Jane Na Oh, Taal Mile Nadi Ki Jal Me Nadi Mile Sagar Me Sagar mile kaun si jal me koi jane na ohare taal mile nadi ki jal me suraj ko dharti tar se dharti ko chandrama dharti ko chandrama pani me seep jaise pyasi har atma Pyasi ar atma omitware Pani me si pujese Pyasi har atma Bhund chupi kis badal me Koi jane na ore tal mile nadi ki jal me Nadi mile sagar me Sagar mile kaun si jal me Koi jane na ore tal mile nadi ki jal me Actually, I was going to say something similar only, Arjunji. I was going to say, is it really knowable completely? <laughs> Can we really know Brahman truly? I mean, it is so infinite that you can't, this mind cannot uh, comprehend it. Is it truly? Can we know everything? Was my one question, one thing, one thought. And uh, uh, Sir, what, what I was also thinking is, when, when uh, if, if you take Brahman, there is, uh, say, say it, it, it's an equilibrium, right? So, when the three gunas are acting out, that's when it's uh, because of the three gunas that different things, there is, there is a disturbance in that equilibrium, right? That is how... Uh, then, because of the different proportions of the gunas, the the uh, the forms and other things are coming. So I feel that that the, the Maya is the one that is creating that that imbalance in that equilibrium because of this. All these illusory things are coming up, whether it is within us also. So that is what is there outside also. No, if if I am Brahman mm. and there is nothing to when I realize that I am Brahman there is nothing to see or nothing to experience right but still right now uh, right now also you are Brahman and right now you are participating in this very conversation yeah yeah that's what I was going to come to like uh, if you if you take from uh, Prabhuji's point of view also Prabhuji is a realized person but still he is doing he is playing the part. He is he's playing the role. Uh, he is not saying that I am Brahman. There is nothing to see, nothing to do. And he is just sitting there or idle like that. So, uh, only only uh, difference is he, he, know, he is in the knowledge and he is acting. Whereas, we are, uh, we, we, act, we are only acting most of the time. <laughs> like, 
Arjun ji said all the knowledge is there, but then it flies out of the window when when the situation actually comes. Whereas they will always be established in that. Are you are you then saying that the the question that is being discussed, which is how do you explain this uh, mountain river galaxies, is an unknowable phenomena? Is that what you are uh, essentially saying? Yeah. How can you completely know it? How okay. how can you how can you uh, uh, yeah how how can you it is so vast it is so vast how can you how can you really know that it is uh, uh, like once you know Adi said maybe hmm. there is a main Brahman and we all we are all little little Brahman he said so <laughs> hmm. this all seems to me like that like. Hmm. Because okay. for, for a human mind, it is not uh, like, like when you were asking me the question again and again, did you, do you mean to say you created this mountain, you created this river? Uh, what struck to me is, uh, can I even, can I, how, how can I say yes when I am so little, when I am so tiny? Mm -hmm. But actually, if I am really Brahman, I am not tiny. I, I am the infinite. So, mm. so it is my mind that is interfering and saying that, no, you cannot create this mountain. Mm. You cannot create this river because for the mind, it is not, it is not possible to even comprehend. How can you create such, say, such a big thing, mm. which even your eyes is not able to perceive completely. Mm. You cannot even see the whole, even if you are going and standing below the Himalayas, can you, can you truly perceive the vastness of that Himalaya with your limited mind? So the, that is the obstacle that is saying that uh, that is stopping you from saying that yes, I created this universe, I created this mountain. That is the one that is stopping you. So exactly. I feel in that very yeah. example, Padmaji. Uh, in that very example, there is someone who is standing at the feet of the Himalayas. Mm. And that someone is incapable. Mm. Because who is that someone who is standing at the feet of the Himalaya? That is the that is the small eye, no. That's the that is the that is the limited body and the mind. Mm. So whenever you look into the phenomena through the lens of that, then you are you are thinking that is the eye. Who's supposed to answer about this phenomena called mountain? Mm. <clears throat> so when you take the form of that little eye, who's standing at the feet of that big mountain, that little eye, you know, is a, some body with some name, is the one who's being asked, did you create? And that little body, that somebody, Naturally struggles. Mm. So yeah, that's how I felt, sir. That's how exactly I felt. I wanted to say yes, but I couldn't. I, like something was stopping. Correct. Because that little body and then this big body, there is a little body and there's a big body and even a bigger body. Now when I see myself as a little body, then there is a something called a bigger body. So the mm -hmm. whole confusion is because I see myself as a little body. Mm. It's like the salt doll looking at the wave. And the salt doll will always think, you know, the ocean is so big. But then what is truly the answer for this, sir? See, one of the simplest day-to-day -day experience all of us have is our dream world. When you are dreaming during your sleep, there is a world and the world has so many things, so many objects, animals, so many varieties of things. 
You can name them, but so many varieties of them. And they all feel so real. Many a times, you may be crying, you may be shouting, fear, everything is very real during the dream. Now, the moment you wake up from the dream, like, you know, remember that uh, story of the king whose uh, city is attacked and who's sleeping. You remember that story, Padmaji? King Janaka. No, not King Janaka. So, there is a king sleeping and then the soldier comes running to him. Oh, king, oh, king, uh, we've been attacked. The neighbor king has come with his large army to uh, take our city away. This king wakes up and then goes, okay, let's go fight him. But then unfortunately, he was not prepared enough, so he lost the battle and the other king uh, banishes him to the forest. He rushes into the forest. He says, you know, dare not come back to the city. So he goes. Now um, he has lost, he's been bruised, uh, all his possessions have been taken away. He is so distraught. He is walking, walking. You know, the thought that is coming again and again is, "Kya uh, What is happening? You know, how can I get my kingdom back?" He is uh, for days together. He walks. You know, there is nothing. He doesn't. He doesn't know what to eat in the jungle. He is just only wishing. You know, I, I wish. You know, I get some food. And uh, for almost like one and a half, two days, he has walked. He is so tired. Almost like he is going to fall and faint. Then suddenly he sees there is a village and outside the village there is a line and somebody is uh, donating food. He feels, oh my God, thank you very much. And then he rushes and then stands in the line. By his turn comes, that fellow says, khatam, food khatam. Then this king is uh, so distraught. He is saying with uh, like a true beggar, please, you know, I have not eaten for three days. Uh, Please give me something, you know, please see that uh, vessel. There must be something, please see. So that fellow, um, looking at uh, the way he's uh, behaving, he feel, he takes pity on him and then opens and then scrapes through that and then says, okay, this is all the last bits, take it. He puts it on a small leaf and then gives it. The king is so happy that he is going, uh, at last he's going to eat something. He wants to sit and eat. So he's taking and then rushing to sit. Suddenly a wind blows and then tuck the leaf falls and the whole food, whatever that was there, becomes part of the mud. He's now, he's falling and then he's crying, crying, crying. Yo, this little morsel of food I was about to eat and uh, that also has become part of the, what to do now? Suddenly he feels somebody shaking him and then uh, he opens his eyes. Then his uh, uh, wife, who is sleeping right next to him, says, Kya ho rai? Kyun aap ro rai ho? Why are you crying? Are you in a dream? Did you have a bad dream? Now he starts crying even more. Now the queen is uh, distraught. What happened? What happened? Wo sach nahi tha. Kyun ro rai aap? Well, that was not true. Why were you crying? Why are you crying? Now the king says, Kya wo sach tha? Ya ye sach hai? Was that the truth? Or is this the truth? Or was that not the truth? Is this not the truth? I don't know. So I'm crying. So this is the story. Have we discussed this story? Yes, sir. We had discussed earlier. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Huh. Sir, but my, my thing is how, how uh, I mean, this is again like what we were suggesting and what you said. No, it is it is relatable. Uh, it's relatable as a personal experience, right? Still, how how do you explain that Maya thing here? So. Who created, how did the dream world appear? 
How did all those situations appear in your own dream? What is the material for all those uh, uh, dream material? Yeah, it's coming from me. It's it's coming. And what is uh, the what is the cause for all those movements and uh, situations of the dream? Impressions, right? Mm, mm. So like that, the dream happened. But when you woke up from the dream, nothing had happened to you really. You had not become the dream character. It appeared as if it's uh, happening, but nothing really changed. You are still the same Padma who went to bed. Yeah, but the the this the particular whatever dream I saw, it is yeah. because of my impression or vasanas. No? Because of the vasanas. Right? <laughs> ah, but, but you, sorry, sorry, sir. If if suppose you take from Brahman Brahman perspective, what vasanas Brahman has got to create ah. a world like that? That is that is the that is the question that then you know naturally occurs, right? So therefore, let's go step by step. So the mm. first step is like how the dream world appears so real. Now, you know, if if I ask you the question, hey, in the dream world there was a flying dinosaur and it looked so real. Was there really a flying dinosaur? No, but it looked so real. Was there really a mountain? No, it looked so real. Uh, you know the king in the example of the story in that uh, king uh, did he really was he really hungry no it appeared so real was he really crying it appeared so real everything was so real that in that moment it was reality but only upon waking up from the dream when when he was shaken when he was waken up woken up from the dream he realized that I was dreaming, but thankfully, he got the most fundamental question. What about now? Am I, am I dreaming or am I, is this real? Kya ye sach hai ya wo sach hai? That dream, we explain it away. Oh, I was only dreaming. But this one, this is this not a dream or is this a dream? Is this reality? Then what is real? Because of this confusion, this Brahma, this world also appears. Like how real the dream world is, is how much real this world is. Like how that dream world is an illusion you concluded by waking up from the so-called dream. This dream, waking up from this dream brings you clarity that this is also nothing but projection. In the example that Padmaji you gave, there is a body standing Small body standing in front of a big body. So small body is asking the question, did I create? Obviously the answer is no. Because the thought process is limited to the body. The thought process is, I am this body. So therefore this body is thinking, did I create? Now, in the dream that each one of us experience, who is the small body? Who is the big body? Who created who? All the bodies, all the dream characters simultaneously came. You cannot really say what came first, what came later. The dream just started projecting. It's like the movie screen. The moment the projector turned on, tuck, the whole movie has emerged. Which part came first, which part came next? Impossible. So the whole, whole, Projection happened, the whole projection simultaneously appeared and the whole situation started happening. And when the identification is with a particular part of the situation as a particular body, then the situation is me and others, me and the world. So, 
the simultaneous occurrence of all the characters and identification is one of the character is what is causing the whole dream. Whether it's a sleeping dream or a waking dream. Is that reality? Is it truly happening? Is it that the one who went to bed became that flying dinosaur or the uh, cheetah or the uh, whatever that uh, city? It appeared so. It was so real. But is that reality? No. How did you know? When you woke up. See, see the picture. In the, in the picture, you can see there is a dreamer and he's dreaming the dream characters and the dream world and all of them appeared so real. But was the dreamer changing into all the dream characters in the dream world? Only upon waking up from the dream, you can say, yeah, it did not change. The one who went to bed, I am still the same. The king had not really lost his kingdom when his wife shook him. So for a moment, he, he might have sighed a relief and said, Abba, I have not lost anything. Um, let me go back to sleep. Then he would have lost the opportunity to really wake up. So the fact that he really woke up is by the question that he's asking, Kya wo sach tha? Ya ye sach hai? What is, what is the truth? So both are nothing but in a similar way a projection. Now, what is the material or what caused all the projections to appear in the dream world? Of course, the impressions. So therefore, Vedanta gives us the model that this entire world is nothing but a projection happening in Narayana. And for the projection to happen, Narayana, who is the fundamental substance, is not that you know Narayana becomes the dream characters. It appears like dream characters. It's an illusion. It's like the dreamer is not becoming the uh, what of the object. It appears like that. Now, to appear like that, there is a one from whose viewpoint it is appearing like that. So the small body is the one from whose viewpoint the appearance is appearing. So because there's a small body looking at the world and interpreting, this is outside of me, this is inside of me. There is a world, me and someone else. So all of these are essentially projections within you, the pure awareness. There is only projection and that whole projection, this whole reason for the projection, like Padmaji said, is given with the maya. Maya means what? Yama iti maya. What appears to be there but is not really there. Is the world really there? The world, is a mountain really there? There is no way to conclude. But what is for sure is you are there. Or when I speak from a personal, you know, from, from a me viewpoint, I am there is certain, rest everything is appearing and disappearing. That much is certain. So what is appearing and disappearing? That is what we call as the play of the Shakti, the energy. Now, where is energy? Within the consciousness only. Energy is not separate from the consciousness. It is not like there is two. <laughs> Shakti. The consciousness is Shakti. Shakti is Shiva. It's like two sides of the same coin. And it is the Shakti aspect of Shiva that gives the illusion of this entire movement. 
called the world. And who is the one who is uh, able to see the world appear and disappear? It is the Shiva. Now, is Shiva separate from Shakti? No. They are not two. But in this grand creation, the dreamer, even the dreamer, when dreaming, is one of the dream character. So, seeing the dream. But only when, only upon waking up, the dreamer realizes the viewpoint from, from whose viewpoint I was seeing the dream that that one, that character is also part of the dream. That somebody who is experiencing this world, that somebody is also part of the dream. Somebody is not separate from the dream. Called a waking dream. So the waking dream character is no different from that dream character who was experiencing the whole dream. So the creation of these characters is what enables this entire play to continue perpetually. And the dream characters do things and uh, that leads to the next, it's like the the action. Action leads to fruit. Fruit leads to uh, seed for the next action. So this is a perpetual thing. Where in the dream. Sir, I, I have a question here. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you say this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, when you dream uh, in, the, in the dream world, you experience and then when you wake up, you you realize that it was all a dream. So it, uh, you are able to brush it off. Like, okay, it was all a dream. Okay. But in, in, in the dream, say you have an accident. Okay. You, you will experience this. Because, you will experience it because you there is a subtle body. So you are uh, going through the same emotion. You might be feeling pain also in the dream. Who's, but, going, through, who's going through the, who, who has an accident in the dream? One of the dream character has accident in the dream. Yeah, yeah, I understood but, that. But, the dreamer, but is the dreamer uh, going through the accident? No, the dreamer has not gone through the accident. Uh, the no, that is... is going through the accident. Uh, no, that is correct. What hmm. I'm trying to uh, reconcile here is, uh, okay, this is about the dream. Now, hmm. in the waking state, when, when suppose you go through an accident in the dream, uh, nothing is happening to your cross body. So, you are able to, when you wake up, no, you see in no dream, injury on yourself. You it, think like that. No, right. In the dream, even in the dream, so-called sleeping dream, huh. you know, if there is an impact, you know, there is a, a pain, there is misery, even in the dream, right? Yeah, uh, but when you when in the waking state only you are making a statement about that. No, in the dream it is very real, correct? Ah, uh, in the dream it is very real. Similarly, uh, in this in this waking dream, uh, it seems to be very real. But is it really real? That is the only question. Kya ye sach hai? Kya wo sach hai? Yeah, that that is what I'm trying to reconcile, sir. Like in the waking state. It is not easy for uh, it is not easy for me to say that uh, because it is, you, you, not, it is it's a dream. The, because when I see in the dream, in the dream, no way I can say that I am I am dreaming, right? In uh. the dream, no way to say I am dreaming. In the dream, if somebody comes and wakes you up and says that no 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 wake up wake up, it seems very no it is not real. That's the that's the beauty of this analogy, right? So in the dream, a tiger is uh, following you and it is uh, about to uh, kill you. And you know the dream character is running, running, shouting, ay, 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 I'm going to be eaten alive. Hmm. It seems so real. Yeah, it, yeah. Right? Yeah. I have, I have heard a story where somebody actually um, with a knife, no, cut their own leg in the in the night. Uh, and somebody asked, what happened? No, there was, uh, uh, you know, some thief coming and uh, I, I wanted to, uh, you know, hurt the thief. And, and they cut their own leg, right? Uh, mm. 
So in a similar way, it, it is so real. The dream is so real. Mm. No, understood, sir. Understood. Uh, we wake up from the dream, sir. We'll come to know that that was a dream. But um, uh, how know. to how to wake up from this waking? That is the question. Yeah. The only answer is Atman Yeah. Yeah, sir. So, yeah, go ahead, please. No, I was also thinking of the same that attending these classes is like waking from the dream itself. Absolutely. Sir, I got one thing. Yeah. This is what is clarifying me, the which has got a bit confused that you know, when the body wants to become the infinite, it is always going, it's like an endless dream, uh, an endless motion. Correct. But when I become the witness itself, and I'm that infinite being. You 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 don't have to become the witness. You are already that. Realize I am a witness. Huh. Realizing that I am a witness gives everything. It's infinite. There's nothing to do. Correct. It's something like when the body wants to conquer this, uh, wants more, like wants to become infinite, which is the very process of this Maya. Uh, and it's like somebody, one farmer was told, you know, once he was told that uh, one person comes, he says, this whole land belongs to me and goes beyond from what you see. You can walk as long as you can. And, but only thing is, your land will be, be yours if you were to come back to the same spot by the evening. So this person becomes so gets oh that's so easy. Then he starts walking. Then mid afternoon he thinks that still I can go further. Still I can go further. Still, I can. and by the time he realizes that like, oh my god I I have to I need to return back. And whatever he does he can't return back. Yeah, you know it's something like trying to uh, conquer the unconquerable. In in other words, um, the way of thinking one day I will become a ocean. Uh. It can never become the ocean. Wave, when it realizes it is nothing but water, then all the confusion ends. Yeah. Yeah. And also one more thing. Uh, see, Jnana, Vijnana, Pragnana. See, however much I can define Pragnana through Vijnana, I cannot define. Hmm. It will still be un. So the only way to un, uh, realize pragnana is be that pragnana, like you said, the water. And in the silence, water appears, appears. When the silence breaks, again I am into the Maya log. And otherwise everything will be more like an elephant and explaining the elephant by catching its tail. Yes. And, uh, but only thing is to get to that silence and, uh, and realize that this whole uh, Atma Jnana is needed. But to be that infinite or the water, there cannot be an explanation, in my opinion. Yeah. So the world is outside of me from the standpoint of a body only. Yeah. Yeah. Then I get into this illusion of how do I explain the world? I can explain everything happening within me. Hmm. Uh, okay, my anger, my sadness, I can explain it because it is happening within me. Me is who? This between two years, uh, you know, this skull, this, uh, oh, this is me. I can explain what is happening within me, sadness, anger. But this world, the very source of confusion is because I am taking this form. So the fundamental cause of the illusion is I become one of the dream character and try to explain the dream through the uh, viewpoint of the dream character. Mm. Realize that it is in your consciousness the dream is appearing. That's all. You've never become any of the dream character. The dreamer is very much there. 
but the characters my god it appeared so real so here the characters are the individual uh, body or the mind and the intellect yeah and the dreamer is the consciousness dreamer is you yeah your awareness awareness yeah and uh, ignorance therefore uh, is the fundamental material for the dream and ignorance has no beginning in 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 tatva bodha itself shankaracharya says ignorance is a fundamental is a fundam is is a cause of the universe is a cause of the change right so the change can happen only when there is uh, some kind of a, a cycle of uh, desire action fruit right so what is the uh, cycle so there is a uh, need for something so i am i i am thirsty the king is thirsty in the dream so he goes to quench or he is hungry he, he wants to quench so he goes to the village so there you know he is begging for food so one thing has led to another i am hungry yeah yeah so like that what is causing all this so fundamental causes i am some dream character and that is what is called as ignorance now when did this ignorance start that is unknown that is anirvachaniya ignorance is anirvachaniya if we cannot decide when did it begin but what we can know for sure is there is a end to ignorance you can wake up from the dream but you cannot ask the dream you cannot ask by being in the dream when did the dream start from when all i am dreaming that's an impossible question to answer but when you wake up from the dream you can clearly realize it's all a dream so it's something like this if i uh, just let me know that means the darkness and the light both there is no source of beginning yeah it's beginning beginningless yeah but the darkness can end and the light yeah. can continue to eternity correct well well put well put but i'll tell you this sunday mornings abba what amazing sir <laughs> and and the darkness appears to be there ha ah, it appears to be there it is not actually there ha ah. and that's the maya that's the maya and that's why maya is also beginningless yeah it's a it's it's inherent it's inherent uh, it's it's a potential uh, in uh, consciousness you know this this very play is is uh, is there it's like the dance and the dancer where is the dancer yeah uh, where is the dance when the dancer is uh, sitting you don't see the dance but when he when he starts moving you see the dance so the only answer you can give from outside view point is it must be there within the dancer mm. it's there when it is expressed you see you can label when it is not expressed it cannot be known so in that sense the world is a leela for the enjoyment of the leela purusha is the world is the expression of the leela the world is nothing but the leela mm. the enjoyment of the leela purusha <coughs> why, why, why why the why do a child go to the beach and um, you know build all those uh, castles and so many nice things 
plays with it and a wave comes and uh, washes it away. But the, the very process of uh, playing is, is all that is. If you ask the child, why are you doing this? You know, there is no great, great purpose or, you know, meaning it gives to that creation. It simply says, uh, oh, it's so fun to play. That's all. Shilpa Kalaji, anything that you would like to share? No, sir. But tell me one thing, sir. Yeah. When I'm sitting here and listening to you and all, everything is fine. Oh, satsang, uh, Padma Ji getting clarification and all. Then I feel that, oh, I got it now. Then again, after some time, everything gets unwinded and say, my God, I still want to there's something more I not got it. Hmm. <laughs> that, that is, uh... I have that question, sir. Because hmm. uh, like last week, I uh, because of my father's function, I couldn't uh, spare time to listen to Guruji's any of the video or anything. So the whole week, uh, there was something uh, missing. There was a big gap. Uh, but uh, what, I'm, what I also thought about at that time was, I have listened to so many videos. I I still have a craving to listen to him more. But is is even if his videos are not there, am I able to apply his teachings? Is uh, something? It's like again, this is also like something uh, like you know, it's a, it's like an addiction or something like that, right? Where you have to listen pass, when you pass, listen, pass, everything pass, is okay. Pass there, pass there, pass there. Uh, uh, let's just slowly play back the sentences you're using. I have a craving to listen to the videos. No, that's at least that's what I thought. Like, is yeah. it is it because why am I not able to oh, apply moment, moment. the teaching? Slow, slow down, slow down, slow down. I, I want you to reflect on that very sentence. I have a craving to listen to the videos. Who is this I who has a craving? Mm. Find out and tell me that, you know, who is that I? <laughs> yeah. So the, one of the dream character is saying, uh, I want to wake up from the dream. Mm. And to wake up from the dream, uh, I will learn everything that is there to learn about dream. So does it mean that this all these teachings are also in the dream only? Of course it is in the dream only. However, this is the, uh, like the tiger, uh, you know, the classical example is, this teaching is like the tiger chasing you in the dream and then out of fear you run run and then uh, so you see a pond you jump into the pond and the cold uh, cold uh, sensation of the water suddenly wakes you up like that in the in the king's uh, story you know he he lost his food and uh, is crying no his wife shaking like right then he woke up right like that this tiger when it pushes you into the water or uh, maybe it uh, catches you in its jaws and eats you alive. That is the Sadhguru. The Sadhguru is that jnana that is telling you, that is helping you, that you, the one who is asking all these questions, I am going to eat you alive. So, So you cannot exist. You don't exist. So 
ओके पदमा जी यस सर शुभा जी so this question has been in my mind for the past 3 weeks i was just waiting this question will be discussed so it was little too much to take so i will go through it again sir okay which question was in your mind this one material cost and intellectual cost in intelligent cost fifth one ha yeah material cost and intelligent cost differentiation Hmm. so i couldn't find answers only the basic things i understood hmm. so i wanted to get in deeply so i for a, for the past 3 weeks i was thinking this question will be discussed yeah. so uh, so today uh, uh, i got some answers but i would like to go through it again to understand it deeply fair enough it's still sinking in sir okay So next class, can we also have others sharing it, uh, sharing the answers, so that we can contemplate more on it. Sure. Padma ji, next class you and me are in Mauna. <laughs> yeah, that's what. <laughs> Let others Mauna. speak. <laughs> Mauna and we'll have Diana and. it's very important to it is very important to express uh, reason is uh, when you express you are you are essentially uh, see all of this is a dialogue within you fundamentally okay so only when you express you know the one who wants to express whatever that character that character is able to see the whole play and is able to get clarity and that is what helps that seeker character who is trying to explain to also become truly silent so there are two aspects of silence you know one is be silent you know listen right so there that ego character is being silenced forcefully but the silence that is being referred is a natural silence you when can that happen when there is deep inner clarity that all the ego characters are illusion that's all then the the quality of that silence is different that the the quality of that silence is it is it is not a i have to be silent kind of a effort oriented silence i have to be peaceful is an effort oriented peace so the silence and the peace which is in it is of a different quality there's a difference between solitude and uh, loneliness yeah can you can you describe your view of solitude and loneliness in the solitude i feel complete and there's no reason why i need somebody else to come uh, fulfill that void i am complete within myself if for example i experienced this in corona for me it was one of the best times because there's nobody to disturb i was with myself and i was very comfortable loneliness is when i experience that i need i i feel so uh, i i am absolutely not complete and i need somebody to fulfill that completeness or becoming only in the presence of other people i feel that oh i am complete otherwise i feel insecure i feel fearful and all so that's what is the distinction in my opinion yeah the loneliness is because i am somebody hmm. and the somebody is looking at this vast thing called world and therefore there is a sense of fear also mm. so somebody can be lonely mm. so somebody can be lonely but you are nobody
And also you talked about expression. I would like to share with the group. I was so I was completely stuck, you know, when you were asking the questions after questions, completely stuck. Then suddenly when I sang that song, something opened up in me. It's not that song that gave the answer, but it gave the opening to explore the answer. That's what expression did to me. Correct. And you told about speaking also, no? Like, I don't know whether the context is right. Ramananji was telling that when I was listening to him some time back, he said, Ibru, Ibru no, uh, they were enlightened. Obba Matad Leila, Inuma Mat Nils Leila. Matad Leila is Ramana Marishi, Mat Nils Leila is Sinmananji. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, and both are masters. If you look at uh, uh, all the literature, most of the literature must have been written about uh, spirituality. Uh, some simple fundamental truth of life, so much explanation is needed. Mm. It all makes sense. See, once, one time it seems that somebody went to Sai Baba, Shiri Sai Baba. Then uh, they asked that, uh, uh, what do you want? He asked. Then the person said, I want peace. Then he said, remove the I, remove the want. What remains is peace. And such a simple answer for a complicated question. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? So nice. I, I feel so blessed. Thank you, Vijay Ji. Thank you, everyone. Amazing. Sunday morning is that says good morning. They send message. Yeah, no, yeah. This is not good morning. Yeah. <laughs> no, no message, nothing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Any any other uh, ending thoughts? If not, we'll go into ending prayers. So next Sunday. Uh, there is going to be World Family Day uh, in Sheshadripuram College in Bangalore and uh, uh, I, I need to be part of that and I uh, invite all of you also so we may not be able to have our Sunday morning session if it is okay with all of you we can uh, have it on Saturday next Saturday I'm okay yeah. yes sir Saturday is fine yes sir all right. I, I know for Deepa Ji, it is an inconvenience because she has also uh, Gita class. So I'll put the message and then, you know, if uh, most of you are okay, we'll have it on Saturday. Shubhaji, shall we end? Yes, sir. Oh, Asatoma. Satkamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Kamaya Mrityorma Amritangamaya Om Shanti 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 Om, lead me from untruth to truth, darkness to light, impermanence to permanence. Om, peace, peace, peace. Om, Pur. <coughs> Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamuduchate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Om that is complete. This is complete. When completeness is removed from completeness, what remains is complete. When completeness is added to completeness, Totality remains complete. Om, peace, peace, peace. See, the completeness couldn't become something else. Then think of becoming complete. It has to remain complete. Water cannot become ocean or wave and then think, I will become water. 
that is why you call it complete. It's already complete. You are already complete. I have become something is the illusion that causes the sense of incompleteness. Can't it be conducted in, in the afternoon, sir? On Saturday? Yeah. Sure. What what time would be? Uh, at uh, 3 or 4 o'clock. 3 or 4. Okay, let me put the message in the group. Let's also respond and based on that. Okay, okay, sir. Nanu, Nanembudu, Nanala, E. De Hamanabuddi, Nanala, Satchidanandatma, Shivananu Nane, Shivoham, Shivoham, Shivoham. I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am not the intellect, I am pure consciousness, Shiva Swarup. Atma Darshanam, Brahma Darshanam, Brahma. Hadarshanam, Satya Darshanam. Recognition of the self is recognition of the whole. Recognition of the whole is recognition of the truth. Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sukandim Pushti Vartanam Urvarukam Iva Bandhanat Mrityor Mukshiya Mamrita. Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sukandim Pushti Vartanam Urvarukam Iva Bandhanat Mrityor Mukshiya Mamrita Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sukandim Pushti Vartanam Urvarukam Iva Bandhanat Mrityor Mukshiya Mamrita We worship the three-eyed one who is fragrant and who nourishes all like the fruit falls off from the bondage of the stem, may we be liberated from death, from mortality. Lokaha samastaha sukino bhavantu Lokaha samastaha sukino bhavantu Lokaha samastaha sukino bhavantu May all beings be happy, healthy and peaceful. Hari Om Tat Sat. Thank you very much, sir. Hari Om. Thank you all. Thank you very much. See you next Saturday. Sir, is it possible to put an option of Friday uh, evening also? Because uh, Saturday 3 to 5, I have back-to-back -back classes. Sir. Okay. Friday evening, we have got Bhagavad Gita, no? Huh. Friday evening. Oh, okay. It's Bhagavad Gita. So Saturday is morning, okay? We'll, we'll let him put in the group. Let's see what response we'll get. Yeah. So, yeah, Deepa ji saying morning is difficult for her, early morning. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's see. Okay, sir, you put it anyway. Okay, it is three of us. Okay, I'll, I'll see the recording. Padma, uh, even at one o'clock, it's fine. In the afternoon. Saturday. And then, 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 we can all be the same world. Yeah, yeah. Let him put in the group. I just wanted to know any other option. No, after no, no, I'll, 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 put a, I'll put a poll. You can, you can uh, vote where we have the <laughs> maximum. <laughs> Vijay ji, Vijay ji, one more thing. Yeah. I heard the Vinay, Vinay, uh, Vinay uh, G's talk. Huh. It was amazing, especially, especially the way he has explained that uh, this thing, no? Uh, she said, no, like, uh, Asatama Sadgayama. Saga, yeah. Sadgayama. Yeah. So yeah. simple, so nicely explained. Thank you. Yeah. Sure, Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.